Hello. Hello. Uh, hello and welcome to this demo presentation of Steampunk Spotter. We are Nate and Anja, and we are both part of the development team for a spotter tool that helps you, well, uh, spot your playbooks. Um, we are specialized in all things IT automation with a particular focus on Ansible so much that we call ourselves Ansible Ninjas. Over the years we have become very active in Ansible community. That includes contributions to various projects with Ansible in, with, within Ansible ecosystem as well as designing uh, some collections and modules um, you, may know, you may know about ServiceNow, SAP, Scale and uh, SensorGo. Um, and we also develop a collection for Terraform, that you probably heard about it yesterday. Um, and we were in the last Ansible Fest, where we focused about trust in, trust in your Ansible playbooks and writing high quality Ansible content. So we have a pretty deep knowledge in Ansible and we know both sides of the story as an end user and as the contrib uh, contributor. Um, and we know the inner workings of Ansible. So we have a unique experience uh, that led us to think about how we, how we can improve our workflow with Ansible. So we started developing a tool that can help that would help us the, um, writing high quality ansible playbooks um, so say hello to steampunk spotter hello hello <laughs> <laughs> so our goal is to um, well with steampunk spotter we can analyze your ansible playbooks and give recommendations regarding um, how the, how well is the playbook written um, to know which fully quiet collection names you should be using uh, if the, all the parameters are well written or if, um, that are used uh, how they're supposed to be used um, and when you think about uh, steampunk spotter you can uh, imagine it like uh, ansible lint on stereo stereos Steroids. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Steroids. <clears throat> so, before diving into the demo, I would just like to point out some um, key features of Ansible uh, Steampunk Spotter. So, the main or the most important feature that you can use Steampunk Spotter for the upgrade, um, and it has the capacity to help you upgrade your Ansible content to the new Ansible versions. Um, and um, the, it will allow you to check the compatibility of your playbooks in the not upgraded environment. So you can check if t your playbooks can be used in Ansible 2.14 even though you're still on Ansible version 2.9. And you can get recommendation at how you must change your playbooks. Um, whenever possible, uh, Ansible or Steampunk Spotter will um, try to automatically change your uh, correct or change your playbooks regarding the um, uh, task or the Ansible version that you uh, uh, defined on which would you like to, to go on. Uh, it will also rename modules and um, correct fully qualified collection names and also generate and maintain your requirements.yaml file. Um, and through the life cycle of playbooks, um, it will spot potential issues uh, that are very difficult to maintain. For example, um, when our modules are removed or uh, deprecated, it will change that or correct it or uh, give you a suge suggestion that that's not uh, available model. Um, it will also um, find a change in default values. If so in 2.13 um, Ansible 
collection was that the default value is true and 2.14 is false. Uh, Steampunk Spotter will also provide you with this information that the default value has changed. Um, but yeah, um, I think that, the, that here is a big elephant in the room. And how is the spotter different from Ansible Lint or why do we need both? Um, or why do we need spotter if we have Ansible Lint? And we don't think that um, spotter is an, uh, we don't think this is one or the other, but maybe you use Ansible Lint and then spotter on top of Ansible Lint. So it's not the competition one or the other, but they are, um, how should I say, uh, major plus benefits from Lint and some benefits from us is the end goal to each step to writing better high quality Ansible playbooks. Um, um, yeah, and Spotter doesn't really check for uh, system, uh, uh, syntax problems, but uh, it's a more deep dive to modules and collections. Uh, so we really do need Ansible Lint for this first step of syntax checking, uh, looking how the playbook is written, and then Spotter to, to go to the, this deep dive. Um, so yeah, Spotter wants you to ensure that you, when you run some playbooks, you know what is really happening and that you trust your Ansible playbooks that this is really the job you want them to do. So yeah, um, we also provided with um, Spotter app that shows you how are you evolving through time that your writing skills are improvi improving on writing Ansible playbooks. Um, and you can see not only your, your progress, but your team progress as well. Do you have leaderboards? Uh, not yet, but uh, <laughs> I think that's a, good <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. uh, a small competition in, in the team. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to try the tool for, for yourself, uh, you just go to our website, you have to register it and then install the CLI tool on your, I don't know, on your terminal um, and scan your playbooks locally. You can also use Spotter app to scan public uh, Git repositories um, and you can integrate Spotter as well in your CI CD uh, pipeline. Now I think that uh, we are all wait waiting for Andrea to show us the demo. So, take over. Is this thing on? Yeah. <laughs> Other way around. Okay. Yeah. That should be okay. Yeah, a bit further away from your mouth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Let's go. So, I will first show you the web page Nate talked about. Um, so, this is our website where you will actually spot the all information about Steven Spotter. Uh, so, you can see that our slogan is Trustable Automation. And from this website, you can actually scroll, scroll down see a few information about Steampunk Spotter itself and uh, of course some screenshots, things like that uh, some, some of its features um, who's it for, what are our target personas, things like that uh, and of course the latest news, we also have a blog post where we talk about Ansible and connected stuff so that's a good, that's a good starting point um, but if you want to start with Spotter right away, you can just click here, start for free and register. Uh, and right now I'm going to just start Spotter and I, I will end up in the dashboard. This is the so-called Spotter app. You can see that I've scanned a lot of things, um, a lot of scans are there. Um, and yeah, this is the actual dashboard where you can um, see how your how you're progressing with your projects, with, with your Ansible playbooks, roles, collection, and stuff like this. Uh, and you can also um, see if the spotter is actually helping you to reduce the learning curve. Um, 
Yeah. So let's see uh, if we go to this side. Um, we will end up to the spotter CLI. Uh, so the spotter CLI is actually needed if you want to run scans from your terminal. Um, so you can just go to PyP and install it with pip install steambox spotter. Um, and that's already what I have here. So I will show you the, the how to run scans directly from the console. Uh, and we'll do a very simple thing. We'll upgrade our Ansible version from 2.4 to 2.14. So we'll actually upgrade our Ansible content. Um, and let's see. Um, here uh, you can see that I have a very simple Ansible project with four roles uh, and a playbook that, that includes all of them. So. Yeah, I need to go into the right directory. So, uh, scenarios see. upgrade. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, okay, so let's see again. So, a very simple Ansible project with four roles and a playbook that includes all of them. Um, and if I can also show you the Ansible version I have installed on my system, Ansible minus minus version so I have Ansible core 2.13 and I said that I have my Ansible content which is actually meant for Ansible 2.4 and I want to upgrade to Ansible 2.14 so that's a lot of years between the two versions I, I believe it's merely like five years of difference so yeah if we want to do that let's just for scan and nice. typing spotter scan dot. So I will scan my current Ansible project and you can see that I get a lot of different errors, warnings and hints. And uh, this, what this means is that Steampunk Spotter actually took the Ansible version from my system and scanned against it. Uh, but I wanna show you one thing first, so if you if, you, if you've been with Ansible for uh, many years, you probably know that since Ansible 2.9, there were Ansible collections. So 2.9 is probably the major change in Ansible content. So I want to scan towards 2.9 first. So what I can do with Spotter is that I can provide an option with the target Ansible version. I want to scan against and I will say 2.9, okay, say 2.9, and we'll see a different result. So you can see uh, not so many errors right here, but more like warnings, hints, uh, just one error that says state is a required parameter in the package module. Okay, so this is one thing, uh, but if I scan against Ansible 2.14, I will get probably the same result as before for the 2.4 or the 2.13 that I have on my system so you can see a lot of errors and uh, if you look closely you'll see that most of the errors are actually connected to a FQCN so fully qualified collection names uh, and Spotter uh, provides a automatic application of those suggestions so we are uh, we are still developing the rewrite functionality for all the checks, but for the FQCNs, you can do it right now. So you just type minus minus rewrite, and that should rewrite your files with fixes. So the result is still the same. This is the result of the scan, but if I run get diff, we should see what has changed. So actually the module names were replaced with those fully qualified collection names uh, so you can see a lot of changes right here and here and so on um, for instance this is a yeah yeah sorry uh, one question yeah um, so at the moment it's rewrite only for short to FQCPN do you do any other rewrites yes exactly the, at the moment we have only for the FQCNs and uh, spotter is also able to generate a requirements file 
for, for you. So yeah, but we'll continue with providing a more complex free rides as we go along with our path. So yeah, at, at the moment, just FQCNs and requirements. I'll also show you the requirements later. So for community crypto, uh, so for instance, this one is actually very interesting. As you can see, for instance, OpenSSL was, rena was renamed to Community Crypto X509 certificate. This one has also a lot of other changes that I'll show you later. Um, so what I wanted to show you now is also that spotter behind the curtain also generated a requirements .yaml file for me with all the Ansible collections that I actually use. Um, so if we go back, so I scanned like this before, spotter scan, Ansible version. Uh, and if you want to go, if you want to have more results, we also offer that. But by default, spotter actually uh, sends not much. So we don't, by default, we don't send any parameter values or we don't send any file information. So we can actually look what actually is sent to our backend servers. So if you export the actual payload, so payload.json, we can do that. So this will not run any scan, it will just export the payload. So here it's saying that I'm not exporting with metadata, but this is not a problem. We can see what's inside that payload that we're sending. So you can see that all the values are actually null. So we're, we don't send any parameter values by default. Um, because we see that that might be a security concern for someone. Um, so the, the payload itself is very simple and it's because we want, we want to keep it like uh, as simple as possible and also that you can edit it yourself and scan with, with imported payload. So you can export the payload, edit it a little bit and then import it back and scan with that. So this is possible. So yeah, this, this is the whole payload. So it also gather some information about your environment, about the Ansible version and stuff, about your installed collections uh, and things like this, but not much. Um, but if I want to actually send the values, I can use a minus minus upload values and minus minus upload metadata to also send the file names and stuff like this so that you can also re uh, see in the Spotter app uh, which files have so many errors or which, which ones don't have many errors and things like that. Um, so I'll do that and I'll export the payload again and if we look on that payload we can see that uh, it has a Spotter metadata entry with uh, files and columns um, and it also uh, apart from that, we, we can also see those parameter values are now being sent. Uh, and this means that you will get uh, more accurate results, uh, more checks will be actual, uh, could be run uh, against that. Um, so if I, if I go back and right now I'll not be exporting, I'll just scan with that two options, uh, you'll see that there will be like more uh, more errors, but we have rewritten most of the FQCNs. We can see that, for instance, the for the Community Crypto X509 certificate, this could be a concern. The, the assert only keyword is not available anymore. Uh, the things have changed, uh, and we know that it's hard to scroll through the through Ansible documentation, looking at the specific module versions and so on. Uh, so we actually provide a direct link to Ansible documentation. So you can do a control click. You'll end up here. Um, let's increase that. And if I, you can scroll down and so on. And if you can also search for this assert only keyword here in the examples. And you'll see that you can actually emulate the assert only provider with this X509 certificate um, module. So it's possible and this can help you to resolve your issues immediately. So you don't need to like search on the web and search for the right version of the right collection and so on and the right model and of course this takes a lot of time so this is helpful of course. 
Um, if I go back, uh, I also wanted to show you, for instance, these warnings that Nate talked about. So the default values that change uh, through some versions, uh, and this yes to true is not so so problematic. But these ones that change, for instance, from true to false, can be problematic if you run this against your production version because you you could not be so sure what this will do, right? So yeah, this is this is it. And um, what I wanted to show also is that you can go back to Spotter app and you have organizations here and you have projects. And if I go in my personal project, you can see that I was doing some scans lately. So for instance, if I go to this latest scan, you can see what's happening, of course. And uh, this can, of course, help you track your, your, your progress uh, over time. Um, another thing that I want to show you is that we're currently developing and releasing the Visual Studio Code plugin for Steambox Potter. And uh, yeah, it's currently in development, but it will look like this. So you'll get this recommendations, tips, hints, and warnings uh, for your playbook, and it will also help you rewrite it. And as you're typing, the Spotter will scan behind automatically, and you'll get all that information. Uh, and for those of you that use VS Code, this will be helpful, but we will also be developing other integrations. We, we already have GitLab, GitHub, but probably others will come shortly. Okay, that's it, and I will, head, uh, I will give the word back to Nate. <coughs> Okay, thank you, Anja. Um, so, as we already saw, um, just let me start the presentation again. Yeah, okay. Um, Anja showed us how we can um, choose what data we send to our servers, uh, but for those of you who are still uh, still have some security issues regarding Spotter, we also provide the um, on-prem solution, and then you have full the full installations in, in your domain, and you can send all the data you want, no problem, and it will be contained um, on your servers. And we don't have any internet access, or we can't access to your on-prem solution. Um, so the main question probably right now is what next? Uh, as Anja showed you, uh, we are we are developing the VSC plugin, and we in the com in the next week it will become public. Um, we will be also adding some additionally security features, and we will be making even more pro progress uh, regarding the checks that will enable us to write even better high quality Ansible playbooks. Um, but yeah, in the past few months, we saw uh, the amazing trend with IE systems like ChatGPT and um, the new Google uh, IE um, system. Uh, we also checked um, how we can write, uh, or maybe what should the workflow um, look if we use AI system to generate our playbooks and use then a Spotter and Lint to uh, correct them and be more safer, trustable automation. Um, we also did some blog posts on our web page, so if anybody wants to look at it, um, please do. Uh, and we are also, we have a great IE uh, team in our company and we will be including IE in Spotter. Um, in the way, in more in the way of assisted writing and um, assisted checks, even more checks uh, regard, regarding the playbooks um, um, spotting. So yeah, but we won't do some um, um, general I system, but very focused on Ansible playbooks. Um, and yeah, um, just a small disclaimer as well. Um, Spotter is in fully beta. Uh, Spotter is a tool that is fully beta right now and will be for um, some time, but eventually we will go to um, some kind of pricing model for on prem and other solutions. Yeah, so that's it on our side.
I think that we are uh, two minutes uh, past the deadline, so it's any it's questions? Okay. We should take some, because you had a time. Yeah, time some problems, yeah, yeah, but you still Yeah, three, questions. Questions, uh, three minutes or five minutes of questions. Yeah. 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 yeah, come on. Hey, uh, thanks for the demo. Um, everything goes up. That was great. Um, just one question about the docs when you mentioned yeah. the start the docs there. Um, for, for, for that module, mm -hmm. you went to the Exile site, but it looked like the module docs were landable module docs. I didn't know if there yeah, yeah, um, or, like, So, yeah, we scraped the full Galaxy for the collections and um, build it uh, similar as um, Ansible doc site because uh, for on-prem solutions and to be more clear regarding the modules, we, uh, so it's a copy. It's not uh, the docs uh, from Ansible Galaxy, but a copy from the Galaxy, if that's understand. You mean that you, you wanted them a specific version? Yeah, yeah. So we can go for uh, Ansible 2.7 collection, 2.8, 2.9, um, so we can see the full history of the docs. Uh, do you extract this from the collection artifact, from the tarballs? Yeah. Like yeah. What about the built-in uh, modules that come with Ansible itself? Uh, uh, the, the, the same. Yeah. yeah, the same, but we don't have that covered yet. So we don't have the documentation for that. For the well, it, it we just have for it the... Just that it's not in collections. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. That's yeah. because of that, yeah. How are you going to scrape that? Uh, we probably won't, so, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Actually, a question about the documentation. I mean, um, some of the collections use doc fragments from other collections or from Ansible Core. So depending on which co versions of the collections you combine, you get different documentation. <laughs> which is... It's going yeah. to make your life really painful, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah it is. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have problems scraping some of them. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's uh, some of some of the collections really have bad documentation, a lot of information missing, and some of some of those are also not structured very well. So some entries are missing and things like that. So we know that, but yeah, for most of them it works. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, just feedback, the DevTools team, I know none of them are here, but they're watching it remotely and they like, think this is great and would like to chat more, but they yeah, yeah, thumbs yeah, up yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll throw it off the question, so. Yeah. So, clearly the client is on, on uh, PyPI and that's great. What about the server? Um, I, so I'm slightly leading you here because I can see straight away in the source code where it's going, right? Um, yeah, yeah. But you talked about a pricing model for on-premise, and the minute we start talking about on-premise, we think about hosting, so now we think about, well, if anyone can host it, why not make the server open source as well, right? Because you've already got the business there for hosting, people don't want to host it themselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's fine. Yeah. And then we can be fully, really happy with the open source. So what do you think? I understand that, and it's it's a very common question, actually. So this is, this is probably the first question we get. The second one is probably uh, the comparison between Ansible and, but okay. Yeah, uh, so currently, as we, as we keep track um, of a lot of collections, a lot of stuff, we have a lot of data, and there's also AI coming, so we'll have that model uh, on the backend server, and yeah, it's, it's a lot of data, and that's why we didn't actually open it, and we, we, we also wanted to pursue the collaboration between the teams with the dashboard, so that's why we actually um, kept the, 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 the fact that they need to register, so, so yeah. So the scanning side requires the data as well as the source code to just like hosting the reports. Is that the concern? That's true, yeah. yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, I I also wanted to mention that for the future and for the for the for the for some of those easier checks that don't require that much information, we'll probably turn them into local checks so they will be fully local side and Perfect. that's Perfect. our that's, no, that's our cool. I'm just yeah. curious whether, well, I, I couldn't yeah. quite see where the blockage was, now it makes more sense. Yeah, yeah. also for the on-prem feature, um, we will be able then to, on the on-prem side, to have the private collections as well. Not just the Galaxy and the public, uh, public collections, but also um, private. 
So that's another feature of on-prem that we cannot uh, offer with the service. Yeah, there, there will be actually data sources that you could actually use. So yeah, this, yeah. this is Makes one thing. Where is a good place to ask further questions? Um, yeah, so one thing is that uh, um, we have flyers here that point you to our website, of course, but you can al always contact us at, at uh, steampunk at xlab.c. So this will be the, the right place to ask. Uh, and yeah, uh, you, you can ping us for anything. We are, we're open to any collaboration possible. To, to actually pursue this tool and of course uh, we believe that the, the, the existence of the tools is important because we are an Ansible community, we only have this Ansible link for static analysis and things like that and we believe that the tool range should be bigger you know, as you have in other ecosystems for instance like in Terraform or Polumi or stuff like that and yeah if we go that way, because one tool can hardly be the, be enough, I believe that this is this could be the real, real uh, gainer, and th this would help like promote Ansible itself and uh, run the uh, also increase the community and so on. So yeah, uh, if you have any questions, any if you want to try it, of course you can try it for free. It will be like uh, the free version will be there forever, and yeah, just contact us at steampunk at xlove.c. This, this is the right place. Yeah, also, if you didn't get any shirts, the sizes are quite uh, uh, randomly picked. <laughs> you can also like mail us or reach me at uh, the matrix. Uh, so, S Nate, I can write down, or maybe just volunteer in the matrix, and we can send you some t shirts and swag. Cool. Right. So, yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.